Hi, this is to answer a question that I've had um, addressing the uh, activity feed. And I'm not talking about journal right now because when you click on journal, you've got, remember, these are all of your kids, but I'm in activities. So one of the questions that I've gotten is that this is a mess, and I totally agree it is a mess. Um, we're going to have to utilize folders in the best way that we can to help straighten this out for teachers. And really and truly, I would not rely on kids to put things in folders. This should just be all a teacher thing. When you create an activity, be sure that you automatically from creation assign um, all of your activities to a folder. And in a minute, I'm going to show you the uh, organization of those folders. But if you haven't already, just know that you can go into your three dots and edit the activity. This will not change it for the students at all. Go to more options. And then right here, there is a place for folders. I'm just going to click edit. And then I'm going to drop it in to the folder that I want it to be in. So this is for the ones you that you've already created that you didn't uh, have a folder for to begin with. And be sure you click Save. Now, let me show you the folder structure that I think will help a lot of the problems, hopefully. I'm in my wrench, and I'm going to go down to uh, Manage Folders. And I just want to kind of show you an example of what you could do. So basically, um, I've chosen a color for, pretend like this is a class that has a teacher and a co-teacher, right? Because you're both in there together. So your stuff is going to get mixed up. And, and what I'm going to say is basically, don't ever go to the activities feed looking for anything. Really don't ever go even to the journal looking for anything. You really either need to be going to a student or you need to be going to a folder. Um, the activities feed is just a mess. That's really just kind of like a landing page where everything has to go. So in here, one of the ways that I'm suggesting is to have a color for each teacher. And I mean, this could be if Jones wanted every, um, if Miss Jones wanted every date or every week to be a different color, that's fine. I don't see why you would need that. I would just do all of Jones' folders are going to be orange and all of Smith's folders are going to be um, green because it's the teachers that are that are putting the activities in folders. So then each folder needs to be separated out by week date. So what happens whenever you do this, and I'm going to X out of this right quick, and this is my activities feed. So you can you can see over here that a lot of these are marked. But but really, I wouldn't go anywhere here. I would just go to journal. And then right over here, this blue symbol where it says class journal, I'm going to click on the blue symbol. And then it says, OK, where do you want to look? Well, I want to go to my activities, maybe for last week, because of course this week they're not all done yet. So I'm going to go in and look at last week's activities, which I know this is this week, but and then you can see, okay, who all has turned in an activity for this week. That's one way to help you organize. The other way is remember if you are in activities and you want to know what kids have not finished a specific activity, then you can click on the gray button right here. And you can see all the ones that have not finished. Of course, this is a demo class for me, so it, all of mine are still in here, but it'll give you an idea. And then here's, here's a further idea. If everybody is finished with this activity, so what you can do is just go to the three dots after um, students have completed the activity and know that um, as, as long as you've pushed this out, doing this is not going to affect the ones that have completed the activity. It will, however, if you archive an activity, it will prevent the ones that have not clicked on it at all. They, they will not be able to get to it. So you need to check this area here first. So if you check this and go down and it looks like everybody has opened it or there has something showing here, then you can archive an activity. So maybe after two weeks, 
um, you want to go, you want to get rid of some of this stuff in your in your activity feed. You can click on the three dots, and then click Archive Activity. And remember, it tells you right here, Archive and Activity will remove it from the class activities feed, but student responses associated with this activity will still be visible. And by doing this, let's say you get rid of it and you have a student come back and you know that needs to redo it, you can still take it out of your activity feed. You're not deleting it. You're just you're just kind of removing it from this landing page. So hopefully that will also help clean some of this activity feed up.